Hey, welcome to the FG 20 and 32 plus training session. The title of this video or this session is Train Yourself and it's being recorded in March 2017. The controller has now been in the market for about four years and we are now embarking on some new wireless and some more high powered controllers. So you're going to see some amazing new products. But anyway, for today, I want to stay with the FG training and the idea of this is that you can go over and over the certain modules until you're comfortable with each piece. I do believe it is possible to teach yourself. So part one of this series of videos is going to be getting started. You've just got your controller, you've forgotten how to connect, not quite sure what software you need, etc, etc. So we'll cover this in about seven to eight minutes. There will be other videos and I'll go through these later. So part one, going through to part eight, we'll cover the other sessions. So this one is part one, getting started, what do you need and getting connected. You've got your controller, you've got your power supply, 24 volts AC or DC, and a standard ethernet cable, it does not need to be crossed. Once you've unzipped the file, the EasyIO training file, unzip it all to your desktop and it will look like this. You've got design reference apps, you've got an offline app tool, you've got the CPT tool. What I normally do here, I'll just unpin my normal one. I'm going to use the same as you. You've got data sheets, templates, all kinds of stuff, and I'll go through this separately. Open CPT. Look at the CPT exe file, the icon. There is no installation, there are no licenses, and there are no expiry dates. Pin this to your taskbar bar so it appears down here. You could close this now and the next thing you would do is don't try and open it yet let's make sure we have a proper connection so in windows 10 and other windows just do a right click over your wi-fi connection and this will give you this internet sharing window go to the ethernet go to properties and set the address to match the subnet of the controller. So the subnet, I've already got mine in there. The subnet, quite often it would be set to obtain IP address automatically. You need to say, use the following. And the subnet is 192.168.10. You can actually put any number next to it, provided it's not number 11, same as the controller. So that proved that works. Put that in there and now go to this start button down the bottom and what we're going to do here is go to the command button. You can search for that in Windows and just do ping 192.168.10.11. And the reason we do this is just to prove we do have an electrical connection. We do have an Ethernet connection. So that looks perfect. So what I can do now is open my CPT. Make that bigger. As you can see, just standard. We're not going to name anything at this stage. It's looking at the FG folder. If it was a 30p controller, you would select 30p. But in this case, it's going to be the FG. And just use the standard 10.11. Open, no password. And this is what you get. I already have something in this controller, but that will disappear once we do the firmware update, um, which we're going to do as part of um, the second video actually. For now, I don't really want you to worry too much about what's in here. I want you to get used to CPT. So what I'm going to do is just delete this just for now, just to make it a little easier for you to see. Don't need to back anything up, do anything at this stage. I just want you to be comfortable with CPT. So CPT, if you hover your mouse anywhere, it tells you what, what everything is. So just press that save button and you'll have got a nice clean wire sheet now. So now that you're connected to CPT, um, you've got this wire sheet. I want to show you what everything means. Um, you can move these little windows around here, up and down. You can even move them to different parts of your screen. Word of warning, don't ever delete the service button. Um, if you do open the service, you can set the time here. If I double click here do local time save and then press the save button up here and then the asterisk disappears on the left here anything in the wire sheet is displayed as a property on the right hand side 
So even the folder, if I select that folder, you can see that's the service folder. And down the bottom we have links and slots. They'll become more evident later. One of the most important icons up here, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine across, is the kit management. This is where you add new functionality. Now I've got quite a few already loaded in this one, but once we get to the next session, um, I'll be showing you how you add these individual functionality drivers or kits that we call them into the controller. Everything is live programming, so everything you do on the fly. I'll just give you a quick look of what it might look like, and you could try this one yourself. If you go to the control kit down here, get used to hitting these arrows there on their side. And you can see we've got a number of objects. I'll show you where the documentation is for these afterwards. But just go get the TikTok, drag it into the workspace, into the wire sheet. Go back up, just slide that up the side there, close it. And then you can go to the FG kit. All hardware, anything to do with I.O. is in the FG kit. So you can see there's a D.O. there. Drag that in. Now, while it's highlighted with the red line around it, you can go to Properties and select which relay you want to switch on. So I'm going to go for D.O. 1. And then we take the True to the In. And you will have a relay clicking on and off. To prove this is real-time programming, just look, you've got an asterisk here on the left. That means it's not been saved yet. If you hit this undo button, it will take out the connection. And if you hit the redo, it will come back again. Undo and save. So the next part is to look at the documents you're going to need. And um, the folder is here. So if we go into the folder to know more about CPT and what it does, go into user guide going to quick start and the third document here CPT tools 1.5 use this to understand more about all the different functions in CPT and what you can and what you can't do and to know more about the kits their functionality we have two sets we have one under the user guides um, if you go to the FG series now you will see we have the Sedona open source kits. These are the basic ones like TikTok, uh, Writable Flow, Writable Boolean. You'll see they're all here, all documented with examples. And then you've got the easy I.O. ones, which are up here. It's the largest file in this directory. And this goes through all the special PID loops and sequencers and all kinds of stuff like that. All good stuff. And that's where you find that. So for now, that's the end of part one. That's literally just to get you started so you can connect to the controller.